Welcome back to QBank Pro Academy. In this video, we will review nursing licensing exam questions. Please check out our resources in the description below that includes links to a free NCLEX course and to our website that has practice exams, quizzes, flashcards, and more. Let's get started. The nurse assesses a patient with cough that is suspected of having COPD. The patient's chest x-ray shows a barrel chest. This is a characteristic of what condition? Select all that apply. A. Asthma. B. Sarcoidosis. C. Chronic pneumonia. D. Emphysema. The correct answer is D. Emphysema. Explanation. Emphysema is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease strongly associated with the history of smoking. The air sacs become damaged and the lungs are hyperinflated. This alters lung mechanics and barrel chest is a characteristic. You are caring for a patient in stage one of labor. Appropriate priority interventions are, select all that apply. A, encourage ambulation. B, monitor vital signs. C, monitor uterine contractions. D, monitor fetal heart rate. The correct answer is B, monitor vital signs, C, monitor uterine contractions, and D, monitor fetal heart rate. Explanation. During the first stage, effacement and dilatation of the cervix occurs. This is characterized by three phases, latent, active, and transition. The mother may be anxious as contractions become more frequent and stronger. A patient is admitted to the hospital with suspected gastroesophageal reflux disease. What is the examination of choice for evaluating gastroesophageal reflux disease and gastric ulcers? A. Chest x-ray. B. Colostomy. C. Upper GI with contrast. D. Upper endoscopy. The correct answer is D. Upper endoscopy. Explanation. Esophageal gastroduodenostomy, EGD, is a procedure that uses a long scope with a light at the tip, inserted through the mouth to inspect the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. Biopsy can also be done with an EGD scope. What stage does the mother request to hold the newborn? A. First stage. B. Second stage. C. Third stage. D. Fourth stage. The correct answer is D. Fourth stage. Explanation. The fourth stage of labor is characterized by physical recovery, occurring after the birth of the newborn and expulsion of the placenta. The mother is tired during this stage but eager to hold and engage with the newborn. The nursing student asked the nurse care practitioner about antidepressant medications for a patient with depression who also has insomnia. The nurse correctly answers A. Doxepine, B. Imipramine, C. Nortriptyline, D. Trazodone. The correct answer is D. Trazodone. Explanation Trazodone potentiates the effects of serotonin causing an increase in mood. One of its therapeutic effects is an increase in sleep time that helps patients with insomnia. The exam will ask about nursing care of patients with mental disorders and treatments. The unlicensed assistant personnel, UAP, ask the nurse about risk factors for gastroesophageal reflux disease. GERD. What foods should be avoided in patients with GERD? Select all that apply. A. Caffeine. B. Chocolate. C. Peppermint. D. Alcoholic beverages. The correct answer is A. Caffeine. B. Chocolate. C. Peppermint. And D. Alcoholic beverages. Explanation. Patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease are cautioned to avoid or eat certain foods sparingly that may worsen symptoms. These include A, B, C, and D. Some healthcare providers also counsel that fried foods and high-fat foods should be avoided. 
location is admitted to the hospital with suspected Crohn's disease. Which of the following are symptoms of Crohn's disease? Select all that apply. A. Cramping. B. Abdominal pain. C. Weight loss. D. Anemia. The correct answer is A. Cramping. B. Abdominal pain. C. Weight loss. D. Anemia. Explanation. All of the above are symptoms of ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disease. It causes abdominal pain, fever, bloating, and diarrhea. It primarily affects the GI tract, but can affect the skin, eyes, and cause fatigue. A UAP is taking care of an 82-year-old female patient recently admitted with hip fracture. The UAP asks the nurse about risk factors for osteoporosis. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A. Diabetes. B. Prolonged steroid use. C. Old age. D. Kidney failure. The correct answer is B. Prolonged steroid use. C. Old age. And D. Kidney failure. Explanation. Osteoporosis commonly affects the aging population and results in increased risk of bone fractures. Bone fractures may occur from minimal trauma, such as falls while ambulating, due to low bone mass and decreased bone strength. Bone mineral testing, DEXA scan, may be recommended in women 65 years of age and older. The nurse is taking care of a child who is admitted with leukemia. What laboratory findings suggest leukemia? Select all that apply. A. Eosinophilia. B. Elevated prothrombin time. C. Neutropenia. D. Decreased activated partial thromboplastin time. The correct answer is C. Neutropenia. Explanation. Leukemia is the most common cancer in children. Children with leukemia have anemia and are at risk for infections due to neutropenia and bleeding from thrombocytopenia. The UAP is caring for a patient admitted with ulcerative colitis. What are the symptoms of ulcerative colitis? Select all that apply. A. Abdominal pain. B. Weight gain. C. Diarrhea. D. Rectal bleeding. The correct answer is A. Abdominal pain. C. Diarrhea. And D. Rectal bleeding. Explanation. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are two important inflammatory bowel conditions. Ulcerative colitis results in ulcers and inflammation of the rectum and large intestines. A, C, and D are correct. Patients experience weight loss rather than weight gain. A patient returns to the ward after surgery. How should a patient who undergoes spinal anesthesia for a surgical procedure be positioned postoperatively? A. Prone. B. Left lateral decubitus. C. Sims position. D. Flat for several hours. The correct answer is D. Flat supine for several hours. Explanation. Patients should remain prone and the legs should not be elevated any higher than placing them on a pillow because the diaphragm muscles needed for effective breathing could be impaired. The nurse is instructing a patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, that is being discharged home. What are the instructions for this patient? Select all that apply. A. Smoking should be limited to less than one pack per day. B. Dietary restrictions of 2,000 calories per day. C. Use pursed lip and diaphragmatic breathing. D. Alternate periods of activity and rest. The correct answer is C. Use pursed lip and diaphragmatic breathing. And D. Alternate periods of activity and rest. Explanation. Patients with COPD should receive education and ensure that they understand activity limitations, dietary recommendations, avoiding allergens, 
prescribed medications, breathing technique, and stop smoking. A new mother calls a nurse about her son's complaints after getting a new cast. How will the nurse recognize signs of compartment syndrome in a patient with a new cast? Select all that apply. A. Increased pulses in the extremity. B. Swelling and tightness in the extremity. C. Severe pain reported by the patient. D. Pain with passive movement. The correct answer is B. Swelling and tightness in the extremity. C. Severe pain reported by the patient. D. Pain with passive movement. Explanation. Compartment syndrome of an extremity occurs when pressure increases within a compartment and compromises the circulation or blood flow through the tissue within the space. Acute compartment syndrome is a surgical emergency. Failure to recognize the condition may result in limb loss. In addition to B, C, and D, patients may experience pins and needles type pain, numbness, and difficulty moving the extremity. A patient is admitted to the hospital with heartburn. What is the upper gastrointestinal series used to examine? Select all that apply. A, esophagus, B, pancreas, C, stomach, D, duodenum. The correct answer is A, esophagus, C, stomach, and D, duodenum. Explanation. Upper GI series involves drinking a barium mixture and an x-ray to see the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. It is not the preferred study to evaluate GERD, but it still has a role in some cases for evaluation. When combined with a small bowel follow-through, it may be used to examine the small intestine. The correct answer is C, proctosigmoiditis. Explanation. Ulcerative colitis may cause proctosigmoiditis or inflammation of the rectum and sigmoid colon. Symptoms include pain, diarrhea, fever, and weight loss. I hope you're starting to feel more comfortable with these GI questions. Let's keep going. What should be recommended to the patient following an upper GI series examination after oral administration of barium, select all that apply. A, NPO for 24 hours to allow the barium to pass. B, drink fluids. C, drink 16 ounces of activated charcoal. D, take a laxative. The correct answer is B, drink fluids and D, take a laxative. Explanation. After a barium study, the patient should be instructed to drink lots of fluids, eat fluids high in fiber, and take a laxative to encourage removal of barium from the gastrointestinal tract. A father asked the nurse what precautions can be taken to reduce the risk of bleeding in his daughter with von Willebrand's disease. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A administer a baby aspirin or NSAID for a headache or fever, B, avoid dental floss and use a soft toothbrush, C, after a needle stick or injection or blood draws, apply pressure for two minutes, D, avoid rectal thermometers. The correct answer is B, avoid dental floss and use a soft toothbrush, and D, avoid rectal thermometers. Explanation. Pressure should be held for at least 10 minutes following an injection or needle stick for blood draws in these patients. Von Willebrand's disease is a hereditary bleeding disorder and causes bleeding especially of the mucous membrane. Aspirin and NSAIDs increase the risk of bleeding. The patient tells the nurse he was prescribed a drug to treat depression and mood 
that blocks the reuptake of serotonin in the brain. The nurse expects the medication record to show, select all that apply, A. Doxepine, B. Citalopram, C. Imipramine, D. Polexetine. The correct answer is B. Citalopram and D. Fluoxetine. Explanation. This question examines if the nursing student recognizes the class of drugs known as serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRI. Citalopram and fluoxetine are examples of common SSRIs. The UAP asks the nurse about pediatric brain tumors. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A. Brain tumors are second in frequency to leukemias in children. B. Headaches occur at night and are improved upon waking in the morning. C. Vomiting may occur that is not related to diet. D. New onset seizures may occur. The correct answer is A. Brain tumors are second in frequency to leukemias in children. C. Vomiting may occur that is not related to diet. And D. New onset seizures may occur. Explanation. Headaches in children with brain tumors are typically worse in the morning upon waking. B states the opposite. Behavioral changes may occur as well as double vision. The nurse is taking care of a 14-year-old male admitted after falling from a tree. Which of the following are true about fractured leg cue prior to cast application? Select all that apply. A. Ambulate with partial weight bearing. B. Flux traction lengthens the injured leg and provides alignment. C. Assess distal pulses. D. Traction provides immobilization and reduces muscle spasm. The nurse assesses a patient with cough and weight loss, suspected of having TB. In duration of 10 millimeters on a tuberculin skin test reaction indicates, select all that apply. A, positive in healthy low-risk individuals. B, positive in residents of prisons and jails. C, positive in children two years of age. D, positive in patients with renal failure on dialysis. The correct answer is B, positive in residents of prisons and jails, C, positive in children two years of age, and D, positive in patients with renal failure on dialysis. Explanation. In duration of greater than or equal to 10 millimeters is considered positive for children less than four years of age and some high-risk group. This includes residents of prisons and jails and patients receiving renal dialysis. The exam will ask about who gets TB tested, the technique, and interpretation of results. The nurse needs to obtain a sputum sample on a patient suspected of pneumonia. How does the nurse proceed? A. Have the patient rinse the mouth with water prior to the sputum collection. B. Rinse the mouth and spit the rinse into the specimen cup. C. Obtain approximately 10 milliliters of expectorant. D. Section the mouth and include the tip of the cannula in the specimen cup. The correct answer is A. Have the patient rinse the mouth with water prior to sputum collection. Explanation. Sputum assessment in pneumonia helps identify the organisms causing the lung infection. The patient will take deep breaths and then cough deeply. Obtain 15 milliliters of sputum for the sample. This should be sent to the lab for culture and sensitivity. The nurse is speaking with the mother whose teenage daughter is diagnosed with bipolar disorder. What are findings that the mother should be told that indicate worsening symptoms? Select all that apply. A, excessive sleeping, B, rapid speech, C, increased watching television, D, increased self-regard.
the correct answer is B, rapid speech, and D, inflated self-regard. Explanation. Bipolar disorder results in mood swings that include mania and depression. Treatment is effective with medication. Mania is characterized by high energy, extreme self-confidence, quick anger, and excessive financial spending. Depression may be characterized by extreme lows. What two postoperative complications occur after meals in patients who have undergone gastric surgery? Select all that apply. A. Postprandial hypoglycemia. B. Postprandial hyperglycemia. C. Diabetes insipidus. D. Dumping. The correct answer is A. Postprandial hypoglycemia. And D. Dumping. Explanation. Surgical procedures that involve gastric resection, removal of a portion of the stomach, and reconnection of the stomach to the small intestine may lead to postprandial low blood sugar and dumping. Symptoms include sweating, palpitations, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Which of the following can be performed by an unlicensed assistant personnel, or UAP? Select all that apply. A. Assessment of drainage. B. Skin care. C. Location and assessment of pain. D. Oral care. The correct answer is B. Skin care. And D. Oral care. Explanation. Unlicensed assistive personnel provide valuable patient care. Their responsibilities include documenting and reporting, assisting with rehabilitative tasks, taking and recording vital signs, and observing patient activities. The nurse is caring for a 26-year-old male inpatient diagnosed with bipolar disorder and mania. What interventions will the nurse take? Select all that apply. A, encourage group activities. B, speak calmly and use slow interactions. C, avoid arguing with the patient. D, organize team sport activities for the patient. The correct answer is B, speak calmly and use slow interactions, and C, avoid arguing with the patient. Explanation. When caring for a patient with bipolar disorder and acute mania, the nurse should avoid exciting the patient and provide a safe environment. Prescribed medications should be administered under observation to ensure compliance. A patient with major depressive disorder is reporting his symptoms over the last three weeks. The nurse expects to document, select all that apply. A, weight loss. B, hypervigilance. C, helplessness. D, lack of desire to spend time with friends and family. The correct answer is A, weight loss. And D, lack of desire to spend time with friends and family. Explanation. Moderate and severe depression causes sleep disturbance, irritability, anxiety, and may increase the use of substances, including drugs and alcohol. The UAP asks the nurse about a patient who has just undergone endobronchial ultrasound. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A, the exam is done to evaluate lung tumors and collect specimens. B, Informed consent will not need to be obtained for this procedure. C. The patient will be monitored for respiratory distress after the procedure. D. Bleeding is not a complication of this procedure. The correct answer is A. The exam is done to evaluate lung tumors and collect specimens. And C. The patient will be monitored for respiratory distress after the procedure. Explanation. Endobronchial ultrasound is a useful test to assess lymph nodes and some lung masses. Endobronchial ultrasound is an invasive procedure that requires informed consent. NPO is necessary to prevent aspiration during the procedure. In the event of distress, emergency resuscitative supplies should be at the bedside. The nurse's patient is leaving the floor for a thoracentesis procedure. 
Which of the following tasks should the nurse complete? Select all that apply. A, explain to the patient that they will be prone during the procedure. B, check the patient's coagulation labs if ordered. C, check to see if an informed consent is on the chart. D, explain to the patient that they will be positioned sitting upright for the procedure. The correct answer is B, check the patient's coagulation labs if ordered, C, check to see if an informed consent is on the chart, and D, explain to the patient that they will be positioned sitting upright for the procedure. Explanation. Thoracentesis is a bedside procedure that allows removal of fluid from the pleural space using a needle. This can help improve the patient's symptoms, and the fluid can be tested for cells and infectious organisms. A patient returns to the ward after surgery after a colectomy. What is Fowler's position? A. Positioning the patient supine with the legs elevated at 30 to 40 degrees. B. Positioning the patient with the head of the bed elevated at 45 to 60 degrees. C. Positioning the patient in left lateral acuteness. D. Positioning the patient supine. The correct answer is B. Positioning the patient with the head of the bed, elevated at 45 to 60 degrees. Explanation. In Fowler's position, the patient is in a seated position, and the knees may be straight or bent. It promotes oxygenation and relaxation of the abdominal wall muscles. A patient is admitted to the hospital with an inguinal hernia. In a patient who has undergone hernia work, what is a priority before discharge? A. Performing incentive spirometry. B. Passage of platus. C. Ability to urinate without a catheter in place. D. Tolerating a regular diet. The correct answer is C. Ability to urinate without a catheter in place. Explanation. Inguinal hernia repair is an outpatient procedure. A catheter will be placed to empty the bladder during the procedure. In addition to inspecting the surgical dressing to make sure it is clean, dry, and intact, when the catheter is removed, the nurse will ensure the patient can void. The nurse is caring for a 41-year-old male patient recently admitted with a femur fracture. Which of the following are important in traction pin care? Select all that apply. A. It is a part of Buck's traction. B. The nurse should be concerned about thick, white, or yellow drainage at the pin site. C. The pin site cannot get wet. D. The nurse should be concerned about a marked increase in the white blood cell count. The correct answer is B. The nurse should be concerned about thick, white, or yellow drainage at the pin site. And D. The nurse should be concerned about a marked increase in the white blood cell count. Explanation. Pin site care includes doing a careful inspection of the pin site for infection, using appropriate technique to cleanse the site, removing any crust or drainage, reapplying the appropriate dressing. The nurse admits an eight-year-old with leukemia and severe neutropenia. What are steps that the nurse will take to protect the patient from infection? Select all that apply. A. Assign the patient to a private room. B. Instruct everyone entering the room to wear a mask. C. Encourage pulmonary measures, cough, deep breathing, and spirometry. D. Prevent constipation and limit catheterization. The correct answer is A. Assign the patient to a private room. B. Instruct everyone entering the room to wear a mask. C. Encourage pulmonary measures, cough, deep breathing, and spirometry. And D. Prevent constipation and limit catheterization. Explanation. Leukemia is characterized by an increase in immature leukocytes in the bone marrow. Because of a reduction in neutrophils, children are at risk for viral, bacterial, and fungal infections. The nurse is caring for a patient in the intensive care unit, ICU. 
What is the best way to provide oral care to patients who cannot perform self-oral care? A, flossing the patient's teeth after each meal. B, rinsing the patient's mouth with mouthwash. C, after every meal, a soft toothbrush should be used to brush the teeth. D, a toothbrush may be used to brush the teeth in the morning and before bed. The correct answer is C. After every meal, a soft toothbrush should be used to brush the teeth. Explanation. Patients in the intensive care unit and patients who cannot provide self-care require good oral care. The teeth should be brushed after every meal to maintain the dentition and gum health. What is Bishop's score? A. This score assesses the status of mammary milk production. B. This score assesses fundal height. C. This score assesses the status of the cervix and the position of the fetus. D. This score assesses the development of the fetus. The correct answer is C. This score assesses the status of the cervix and the position of the fetus. Explanation. The Bishop score is sometimes called a cervix score. The Bishop score is used to predict how likely it is that the mother will go into labor soon. The Bishop score considers factors about the cervix, such as dilatation and the position of the fetus. The nurse receives a patient from the recovery room who has undergone bronchoscopy. Which of the following are important steps? Select all that apply. A, NPO prior to bronchoscopy. B, obtain informed consent prior to bronchoscopy. C, administer contrast dye 20 minutes prior to bronchoscopy. D, emergency supplies for resuscitation should be obtained and readily available prior to starting bronchoscopy. The correct answer is A, MPO prior to bronchoscopy, B, obtain informed consent prior to bronchoscopy, and D, emergency supplies for resuscitation should be obtained and readily available prior to starting bronchoscopy. Explanation. Bronchoscopy is an invasive procedure that requires informed consent. MPO is necessary to prevent aspiration during the procedure. In the event of distress, emergency resuscitative supplies should be at the bedside. Which of the following are true about the nursing care of a patient with a pneumothorax? A, supplemental oxygen, binasal cannula, or face mask should be removed prior to starting any procedure. B, to assess for an air leak, the nurse should clamp the chest tube and observe the chest tube drainage system. C, when the chest tube is in place, no holes should be visible outside of the skin. D, when transporting the patient, the chest tube drainage system may be placed on top of the bed mattress near the patient's feet. The correct answer is C, when the chest tube is in place, no holes should be visible outside of the skin. Explanation. Patients with pneumothorax are typically short of breath and require supplemental oxygen around the clock. Do not clamp chest tubes unless you have a written order. The chest tube drainage system should be maintained below the level of the heart. An unexpected elevation in temperature, 102 degrees after an intestinal endoscopic procedure such as an EGD, should prompt the nurse to select all that apply. A, suspect perforation. B, assess the patient. C, document the finding in the record only. D, contact the healthcare provider. The correct answer is A, suspect perforation. B, assess the patient. And D, contact the healthcare provider. Explanation. Perforation is a risk of gastrointestinal endoscopic procedures. After the procedure, nurses and patients should be vigilant for an unexplained high temperature, even in the absence of abdominal pain. What are some examples of lifestyle changes 
that a patient can make to reduce the symptoms of GERD. Select all that apply. A, avoid wearing constrictive clothing, especially around the waist. B, avoid water after 7 p.m. C, limit late night snacks and carbonated drinks. D, avoid laying down immediately after eating. The correct answer is A, avoid wearing constrictive clothing, especially around the waist. C, limit late night snacks and carbonated drinks. And D, avoid laying down immediately after eating. Explanation. Gastroesophageal reflux disease symptoms can be lessened with lifestyle changes, such as changing one's diet and avoiding laying down immediately after eating. Weight loss may help, and one should avoid wearing constrictive clothing. What are non-reassuring fetal heart patterns? Select all that apply. A. 15 beats per minute, more than baseline, and lasting at least 15 seconds. B. Bradycardia. C. Late decelerations. D. Early decelerations. The correct answer is B. Bradycardia. And C. Late decelerations. Explanation. Non-reassuring fetal heart patterns indicate fetal distress and indicate suspected hypoxia in the fetus. Some examples of non-reassuring fetal heart patterns are repetitive or prolonged decelerations, bradycardia, and tachycardia. The nurse is giving her father instructions for his 13-year-old son diagnosed with hemophilia. What sports will not be suggested? A. Soccer. B. Swimming. C. Football. D. Wrestling. The correct answer is A. Soccer. C. Football. And D. Wrestling. Explanation. Because of the risk of bleeding, contact sports will not be recommended. A, C, and D. Swimming is recommended and is a safe after-school activity. The nurse is taking care of a new mother whose first child is diagnosed with sickle cell anemia. What are findings that the mother should be told that suggest sickle cell crisis? Select all that apply. A. Pallor. B. Abdominal pain. C. Chills. D. Painful swelling of the joints, hands, and feet. The correct answer is B. Abdominal pain. And D. Painful swelling of the joints, hands, and feet. Explanation. Sickle cell crisis occurs when the sickle red blood cells obstruct the small blood vessels. This condition is very painful, and the patients may be admitted for pain management. Treatment involves ensuring adequate oxygenation, hydration, and pain control. The new UAP asks you about episiotomy. You answer A. Drainage of excess amniotic fluid B. A procedure to repair the cervix C. A surgical cut made at the opening to facilitate a difficult delivery D. A procedure to repair the posterior vaginal wall. The correct answer is C. A surgical cut made at the opening to facilitate a difficult delivery. Explanation. Episiotomy involves making a surgical cut to enlarge the birth canal during childbirth to prevent tearing of the tissue. Post procedure, the mother will need to be educated about perineal care and provided with pain control. What is amniotomy? A. Drainage of excess amniotic fluid. B. Rupture of the amnion performed by the obstetrician. C. A test to sample the amniotic fluid. D. A procedure to repair the amniotic membranes. The correct answer is B. Rupture of the amnion performed by the obstetrician. Explanation. Amniotomy is done by a medical professional to rupture the amniotic sac. This may be referred to as breaking the water in lay terminology. There are some reasons for this procedure, such as post-term pregnancy. The nurse is assessing a 33-year-old male patient with heartburn. Heartburn is a symptom of, select all that apply, A, gastric tumors, B, esophageal tumors, C, gastroesophageal reflux, D, hiatal hernia. The correct answer is C, gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, and hiatal hernia. Explanation. 
Heartburn is a burning pain and discomfort in the epigastric region and chest that occurs commonly with GERD and in some cases of hiatal hernia. Some patients with hiatal hernia have no symptoms. Hiatal hernia is a condition when a portion of the stomach pushes up through the diaphragm esophageal hiatus. The nurse is assessing a 24-year-old female patient with depression. The nurse expects the patient's record to document. Select all that apply. A, sleep disturbance. B, hyperalertness. C, low self-esteem. D, increased energy. The correct answer is A, sleep disturbance, and C, low self-esteem. Explanation. Depression may persist for two weeks or wax and wane over years. Patients may experience low mood, low self-esteem, guilt, helplessness, fatigue, and social withdrawal. Sleep, affect, and appetite may be affected. A patient is admitted to the hospital with anorexia and suspected pancreatic cancer. What is jaundice? A, a yellowing of the skin, B, a yellowing of the sclera and mucous membranes, C, a condition characterized by purpura, D, a condition caused by high bilirubin in the blood. The correct answer is A, a yellowing of the skin, B, a yellowing of the sclera and mucous membranes, and D, a condition caused by high bilirubin in the blood. Explanation. Jaundice is a condition with yellowing of the mucous membranes and the skin. It is due to bilirubin pigment and may arise with liver disease or when there is a blockage of the bile duct. Blockages may be due to stones or tumors. In a patient with jaundice, where does the primary source of bilirubin come from? A, the breakdown of red blood cells. B, breakdown of lipids by lipase. C, breakdown of starches by amylase, D, breakdown of immunoglobulins. The correct answer is A, the breakdown of red blood cells. Explanation, bilirubin is a byproduct from the normal breakdown of red blood cells. B, lipid breakdown by lipase results in fatty acids. C, starch breakdown by amylase results in smaller sugars. A patient is admitted to the hospital with painful stomatitis. What is stomatitis? A, inflammation of the mouth. B, inflammation of the esophagus. C, inflammation of the fundus and stomach. D, inflammation of the rectum and anus. The answer is A, inflammation of the mouth. Explanation. When you see itis, remember inflammation. Stomatitis is painful inflammation of the mouth and may be accompanied by sores and irritation that make it uncomfortable to drink and eat. Trauma and infection may cause stomatitis. What stage of labor is characterized by expulsion of the fetus? A, first stage, B, second stage, C, third stage, D, fourth stage. The correct answer is B, second stage. Explanation. There are four stages of labor. Stage one, effacement and dilatation of the cervix. Stage two, expulsion of the fetus. Stage three, separation of the placenta. Stage four, physical recovery. During the second stage, often referred to as the pushing stage, the mother is concentrating on pushing with contractions. New onset of sharp upper abdominal pain in a patient with a history of peptic ulcer disease should prompt the nurse to select all that apply. A, provide PRN pain medication. B, suspect perforation. C, assess the patient. D, contact the healthcare provider. The correct answer is B, suspect perforation. C, assess the patient. And D, contact the healthcare provider. Explanation. Perforation is a risk of peptic ulcer disease in patients with ulcers. If ulcers are untreated or worsen, perforation in the lining of the organ may occur. 
nurses and patients should be vigilant for high temperature and sharp upper abdominal pain in patients with peptic ulcer disease. What is the appropriate therapeutic lithium blood level? A, 1 to 3.2 milliequivalents per liter. B, 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 milliequivalents per liter. C, 0 0.6 to 1.2 milliequivalents per liter. D, 2.6 to 8.2 millimoles per liter. The correct answer is C, 0 0.6 to 1.2 milliequivalents per liter. Explanation. The therapeutic drug level of lithium is 0 0.6 to 1.2 milliequivalents per liter. When therapy is first begun, the level must be monitored closely. Signs of lithium toxicity include ataxia, muscle twitching, hyperreflexia, and seizures. A nurse is caring for an inpatient with mania who is diagnosed with bipolar disorder. What are important strategies for activities? Select all that apply. A, encouraging competitive sport activities. B, set limits for inappropriate behavior. C, keep hazardous objects away from the patient. D, encourage the patient to talk about their feelings. The correct answer is B, set limits for inappropriate behavior. C, keep hazardous objects away from the patient. And D, encourage the patient to talk about their feelings. Explanation. Bipolar disorder results in mood swings that include mania and depression. Mania is characterized by high energy, extreme self-confidence, quick anger, and excessive financial spending. The nurse is assessing a patient admitted to the hospital with hernia. Treatment of hiatal hernia includes, select all that apply, A, weight loss, B, medications, C, dietary restrictions, D, surgery. The correct answer is A, weight loss, B, medications, C, dietary restrictions, and D, surgery. Explanation. Treatment of hiatal hernia includes all the choices listed, weight loss, medications, dietary restrictions, and when these fail, surgery. Some patients with hiatal hernia have no symptoms Medications used include proton pump inhibitors and antacids. What are the priority interventions for amniotic fluid embolism? Select all that apply. A, place the mother in supine position. B, administer high flow oxygen to the mother. C, start intravenous fluids. D, prepare for intubation. The correct answer is B, administer high flow oxygen to the mother. C start intravenous fluids, and D, prepare for intubation. Explanation. A is incorrect. The mother should be positioned on her side. The healthcare provider will be contacted immediately. Oxygen should be administered, and the patient will be prepared for intubation. Fetal and maternal status will be monitored continuously. The nurse is assessing a new patient with suspected gastroesophageal reflux disease. Medications, for gastroesophageal reflux disease include, select all that apply, A, H2 receptor antagonists, for example, cimetidine, famotidine, B, omeprazole, C, proton pump inhibitors, D, pancrease. The correct answer is A, H2 receptor antagonists, for example, cimetidine and famotidine, B, omeprazole, and C, proton pump inhibitors. Explanation. The treatment of GERD includes lifestyle changes and several medications. For example, H2 receptor antagonists, cimetidine and famotidine, proton pump inhibitors, omeprazole, pantoprazole, and antacids. D, pancrease, is a medication that contains digestive enzymes to help break down food. The nurse is discharging a patient with gastroesophageal reflux disease. How does the medication, cimetidine, work? Select all that apply. A, it is a proton pump inhibitor. B, it is a histamine receptor antagonist. C, by blocking H2 receptors on the parietal cell. D, 
it inhibits acid secretion. The correct answer is B. It is a histamine receptor antagonist. C. By blocking H2 receptors on the parietal cell. And D. It inhibits acid secretion. Explanation. Cimetidine is prescribed orally in some cases to treat GERD. It is a histamine 2 receptor antagonist that works by reducing gastric acid secretion. A is incorrect. PPIs inhibit the parietal cell hydrogen potassium ATP pump. Which of the following characterize premature rupture of membranes? Select all that apply. A. There is an increased risk of infection. B. Nitrosine test is negative. C. No intervention is required. D. Rupture of the membranes before the onset of labor. The correct answer is A. There is an increased risk of infection. And D. Rupture of the membranes before the onset of labor. Explanation. Premature rupture of the membranes is spontaneous rupture of the amniotic membranes before the onset of labor. When this occurs, infection is a significant risk. Proceeding after premature rupture of the membranes occurs is determined by the gestational age. The UAP asked the nurse about how to recognize increased intracranial pressure, ICP, in an infant with a brain tumor. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A, hunger and thirst. B, high-pitched cry. C, decreased head circumference. D, bulging fontanelles. The correct answer is B, high-pitched cry, and D, bulging fontanelles. Explanation. Elevated ICP is a risk in infants and children with brain tumor and postcraniotomy. Physical findings in infants include high-pitched cry, bulging fontanelles, poor feeding, and irritability. The exam will ask about nursing care of children with bleeding disorders, common cancers, brain tumors, and post-op craniotomy. A father with sickle cell anemia asks what the risk factors are for sickle cell disease. The nurse correctly answers, A, being of Asian descent, B, being of African American descent, C, having neonatal B12 deficiency, and D, having a mother who is iron deficient during the first trimester of pregnancy. The correct answer is B, being of African American descent. Explanation. Nursing students should be familiar with hemoglobinopathies. Patients with sickle cell disease are affected by changes in the blood oxygen content. Low oxygen causes the red blood cells to assume a sickle shape that obstructs blood vessels. When this occurs, it is very painful. The nurse is discharging a patient with gastroesophageal reflux disease. What are the adverse effects of frequent antacid use? Select all that apply. A. Jaundice. B. Constipation. C. Hyperamylosemia. D. Elevated magnesium and aluminum in patients with renal failure. The correct answer is B. Constipation. And D. Elevated magnesium and aluminum in patients with renal failure. Explanation. Antacids may be used to relieve upset stomach and heartburn. Adverse effects of this medication, especially when taken in excess, include constipation, nausea, fecal impaction, and electrolyte abnormalities. The nurse is caring for a patient after gastrectomy. When can most patients resume three meals per day after gastrectomy? Partial gastrectomy surgery. A, three to five days. B, two to three weeks. C, three to five months. D, six to 12 months. The correct answer is D, six to 12 months. Explanation, patients who have undergone gastrectomy will resume meals by starting with six or more small meals daily. The food should be chewed well. It is recommended that protein is consumed with each meal and the patient should inform the healthcare provider if they begin to lose weight. What characterizes preterm labor? Select all that apply. A, labor occurring after the 20th week of gestation. B, labor occurring before the 38th week of gestation. C, labor occurring before the 37th week of gestation. 
D. Risk factors of preterm labor are maternal age over 35. The correct answer is A. Labor occurring after the 20th week of gestation, and C. Labor occurring before the 37th week of gestation. Explanation. The correct answer is A and C. Preterm uterine contractions may be accompanied by abdominal cramping, multifetal pregnancy, a history of substance abuse, pregnancy in the very young, and older maternal age are risk factors. How many stages of labor are described? A, three stages, B, four stages, C, five stages, D, six stages. The correct answer is B, four stages. Explanation, there are four stages of labor. Stage one, effacement and dilatation of the cervix. Stage two, expulsion of the fetus. Stage three, separation of the placenta. Stage four, physical recovery. Stage one is the longest stage. During this stage, the mother should be kept informed about the progress of labor. The patient tells a nurse he was prescribed a drug to treat depression and mood that blocks the reuptake of serotonin in the brain. The nurse expects the medication record to show. Select all that apply. A, doxepin. B, citalopram. C, imipramine. D, fluoxetine. The correct answer is A, doxepin, and C, nortriptyline. Explanation. This question will determine if the nursing student recognizes the class of drugs known as tricyclic antidepressants, or TCAs. Doxepin and nortriptyline are examples of common TCAs. The nurse is speaking with the mother whose teenage son is being treated for depression and narrow angle glaucoma. What are some drugs that should be avoided? Select all that apply. A, doxepin, B, imipramine, C, nortriptyline, D, phenylzine. How are you doing on these exam questions? Check out the links below this video for more great resources. The correct answer is A, doxepin, B, imipramine, and C, nortriptyline. D, phenylzine is not a tricyclic antidepressant. A, B, and C are tricyclic antidepressants, and this class of drugs should not be prescribed to patients with narrow angle glaucoma. What characterizes polyhydramnios? Select all that apply. A, polyhydramnios is associated with maternal infection. B, too much amniotic fluid around the fetus. C, polyhydramnios is associated with maternal diabetes. D, Polyhydramnios is associated with maternal shortness of breath. The correct answer is B, too much amniotic fluid around the fetus. C, polyhydramnios is associated with maternal diabetes. And D, polyhydramnios is associated with maternal shortness of breath. Explanation. Polyhydramnios is characterized by excess amniotic fluid surrounding the baby in the uterus. Some women with polyhydramnios do not have symptoms. Others may have abdominal pain or difficulty breathing. An ultrasound may be done to measure the amount of amniotic fluid. What stage of labor is characterized by separation of the placenta? A, first stage, B, second stage, C, third stage, D, fourth stage. The correct answer is C, third stage. Explanation. During the third stage of labor, separation and expulsion of a placenta occur. The birth of the newborn occurs in stage two. In the third stage, the mother is tired after concentrating on pushing with contractions. What is meconium stained amniotic fluid? A, staining of the amniotic fluid due to bile. B, staining of the amniotic fluid due to the breakdown of bilirubin. C, staining of the amniotic fluid due to breakdown of red blood cells. D, staining of the amniotic fluid due to passage of the fetus's first bowel movement. The correct answer is D, 
staining of the amniotic fluid due to passage of the fetus's first bowel movement. Explanation. Meconium refers to the newborn's first stool. It is normally passed within the first 24 hours. When meconium is passed in the amniotic fluid, there is a chance that the baby may aspirate or breathe it into the lungs. This can result in serious complications. Which of the following statements are false regarding preparation for and aftercare of bronchoscopy? A. The patient should be NPO prior to the procedure. B. Dentures may be left in place. C. Intravenous access is maintained for medication administration and fluids as needed. D. The patient should be monitored for bloody sputum after the procedure. The correct answer is B. Dentures may be left in place. Explanation. Bronchoscopy allows direct visualization of the airways. In addition, samples and biopsies can be obtained. The patient is sedated and a long scope with a light at the tip will be inserted into the airway for the procedure. What stage of labor is characterized by pushing? A, first stage. B, second stage. C, third stage. D, fourth stage. The correct answer is B, second stage. Explanation. During the second stage of labor, contractions become stronger and more frequent. It is also called the pushing stage. The birth of a newborn occurs in the second stage. The nurse assesses a patient with shortness of breath that is suspected of having pulmonary embolism. What are the nursing priorities? Select all that apply. A. Reassure and position the patient in prone position. B. Administer oxygen. C. Notify the healthcare provider. D. Obtain a sputum for culture. The correct answer is B. Administer oxygen. And C. Notify the healthcare provider. Explanation. PE may occur when a clot forms in a deep vein that travels to the heart and then goes to the lung. Symptoms include shortness of breath, syncope, severe hypotension, and respiratory distress. The exam will ask about nursing care of the most common respiratory problems, for example, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, and bronchitis. The nurse assesses a patient with cough and dark yellow sputum. Which of the following is true about the evaluation of lung infection? Select all that apply. A, a chest x-ray will not be needed. B, if sputum collection is done, 15 milliliters of sputum should be obtained. C, a clean, dry, non-sterile cup may be used for sputum collection. D, remove all jewelry in the chest area if a chest x-ray is ordered. The correct answer is, B, if sputum collection is done, 15 milliliters of sputum should be obtained. And D, remove all jewelry from the chest area if a chest x-ray is ordered. Explanation. Evaluating patients for lung infection or pneumonia includes chest x-ray and sputum collection. A clean, dry, sterile cup will be used. Presenting symptoms may include fever, productive cough, chest pain, and mild to severe shortness of breath. A 60-year-old male with a history of urinary retention and prostate disease is being evaluated at the mental health clinic. What drugs will not be appropriate for cyclothymic disorder? Select all that apply. A, citalopram. B, bupropion. C, nortriptyline. D, fluoxetine. The correct answer is C, nortriptyline. Explanation. C, nortriptyline is a tricyclic antidepressant, TCA. This drug potentiates norepinephrine and serotonin in the central nervous system and elevates mood. Drugs in this class should be avoided in patients with a history of urinary retention. 
The other drugs listed are not PCAs. The nurse is providing discharge instructions for a patient on monoamine oxidase inhibiting drugs. What drugs can result in high fever, convulsions, and death when combined with MAOI drugs? A. Trazodone. B. Doxepine. C. Acetaminophen. D. Vitamin C. The correct answer is B. Doxepine. Explanation. B. Doxepine is a tricyclic antidepressant. When doxepin is taken with monoamine oxidase inhibitors, this can result in a severe adverse reaction resulting in death. Oral care and inflammatory conditions of the salivary glands may be included with these types of questions. Let's try one. A patient is admitted to the hospital with parotitis. What is parotitis and who is at risk for the condition? Select all that apply. A. Parotitis is a soft tumor of the parotid gland. B. Patients at risk are those with poor fluid intake. C. Patients at risk are those with a lack of oral care. D. Parotitis is inflammation of the parotid gland. The correct answer is B. Patients at risk are those with poor fluid intake. C. Patients at risk are those with lack of oral care. And D. Parotitis is inflammation of the parotid gland. Explanation. When you say itis, remember inflammation. Parotitis is painful inflammation of the parotid gland. This gland is located between the ear and the jaw. Patients at risk are those with lack of oral care or poor fluid intake. 